now some schools that were marked down by Ofsted inspectors in their annual reports were told part of the reason was their lack of gender identity classes uh, that led to the dying grade, according to findings reported in The Telegraph. Now, comments on the lack of classes on gender diversity or gender reassignment were amongst the reasons given in at least four schools to justify their inadequate or required improvement grades. Yes, well, as you could imagine, this has led to Ofsted inspectors being accused of pushing political agendas on schools. And here to discuss more of this is Head of Education for the campaign group Don't Divide Us, Alka Seagal Cuthbert. Thank you for joining us this morning. Uh, surely, just surely, uh, a school's rating from Ofsted has to be on the quality of their teaching in math, English, science, on the quality of education they're getting um, as a whole. What's gender identity got to do with it, all of it? Um, well, hello, good morning. It's, it's, it's got very little to do with educational quality if you're talking about education in an established sense that most people understand it, a liberal education based on the subjects that you've just said. But I think what's happened, and this is uh, uh, that we can see happening in schools and also in the way Ofsted's own kind of focus has shifted from its original one when it was set up in 1992, is that it's moved away from a focus on academic um, qualities, academic achievements, and more on to the kind of softer, less easy to define questions of personal development and, more, most importantly, values. And when it comes to values, this is where you kind of open up a huge area of contestation when you have some schools wanting to pursue and inculcate values that most that maybe many parents don't agree with, and it has not been publicly scrutinised, and often it's not even, you know, known to parents, you know, until by they happen, happen to come across this by chance. And I think this is reflected in Ofsted, in Ofsted's own kind of focus, which is, um, you know, when I, I mean, I kind of felt for them almost when I, I read their, a spokesman from them saying, we are going no further than what the government guidance tells us to do. And that's actually true, right? They are, it is actually... Um, statutory they have statutory duties under current legislation to teach um gen, you know to, to to make sure everybody knows about gender relationships in their school career they have a duty to for schools to um teach anti-racism i do and the I problem do understand. is yeah, sorry to interrupt you. I do understand sort of gender relationships in, in terms of, you know, you, you do have to teach children what a, a good relationship looks like, what a healthy relationship looks like. But looking at this Telegraph uh, report, it says in one case, Ofsted rated a school inadequate, which was the lowest mark, and it cited uh, the lack of gender reassignment teaching mm. as one of those reasons. I mean, why do children between age 3 to 16 need to be learning about gender reassignment surgery? They absolutely don't. The only people that think they do are very are people, are educated, a minority of educators who are very ideologically committed. It's often very politically partisan. They're playing out politics in, in classrooms with, um, with issues like this. Of course they don't need to know. And similarly with racism and anti-racism, it's one thing to, to teach these issues in an impartial way, which is where you have to properly present a range of views, opposing views, not just one particular approach. Um, so that's, that's a very different thing to schools having a whole week of celebrating gender identity or celebrating, you know, um, you know, uh, committed to dealing with your white privilege or, or things like that. Those aren't really educational things. They're about changing cultural values. They're about changing the very way children think. And often it's at odds with 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 the way with the values of their parents. It's it's deeply divisive, and it's very anti-educational. And uh, you know, I think uh, there really does need to be greater accountability for bodies like Ofsted that have such tremendous influence. You know, they have huge influence amongst all our schools. You know, it's and yet you know nobody really knows this this criteria is. There's so much room for different interpretations. Well, in some schools, it can be fine, and in other schools, what's being taught and the way it's being taught is really shocking. Well, Alka, 
OK, I mean, the thing is, though, but sort of values, as you said, um, they're, they're, they're kind of subjective, aren't they? They're personal. People have different... So you've got these subjective values of maybe the, the teacher or somebody else or being sort of spread across. And then, obviously, they're talking about teaching gender when there are now 76 of them, apparently, but the la that was the last time I looked, and a lot of them are actually made up. Why do you think this is happening in schools? Because I, I, I just simply don't get it. I thought maybe it's because they took religious education out of the, the curriculum. I don't get it. What, why do you think this is happening? Well, it's funny you should say that, but, you know, I think in some cases, you know, schools some of the really kind of schools where they're using material that's quite blatantly activist is coming in through through um it's coming in through through bodies like the National Association of Religious Education that <laughs> they're they're not immune from this the effects of identity politics either as to why it's happening i think you know it's it's very easy to just dismiss all this as the as the outcome of a minority of activist or a you know takeover and there's there's that might be true to an extent, but more fundamentally, it's because we've just lost any kind of consensus on the purpose of what education should be. Should it be to educate our children, to introduce them um, to a world of ideas through which they develop their imagination and their intellect? Or is education to produce citizens who have a definition of what it is to be um, respectful of gender identity or, you know, observe their white privilege and atone for it or feel, you know, oppressed and all those kinds of very um, formulaic, rigid, very unfree <laughs> kind of ways of thinking. And, and it's very worrying that some schools seem to be following the second way rather than the first way. Be heightening intolerance, actually, and actually dividing people and doing the very thing that they're trying to do they're talking about inclusivity, but it's excluding so many people. It's ridiculous. Alka, it's been really good to talk to you. That is Alka Sigal Cuthbert. She's from a campaign group, Don't Divide Us. Yes, and I'm sure many people would prefer her to be teaching well, their yeah. kids.